Come join us in Denver, Colorado, October 14th, 15th, and 16th, 2011, for the best high-end headphone audio show in the world, the third annual Can Jam at Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. To find out more about Can Jam at RMAF, go to www.canjam.org. Hi, I'm Jude from HeadFi.org, and on this episode of HeadFi TV, we'll be looking at this clever new digital audio device, a portable one, from Fostex of Japan. It's called the Fostex HP P1. If you've been watching HeadFi TV, you may remember from episode 3 that we covered the Cypher Labs Algorithm Solo. Now, in the event that you didn't watch episode 3, what the Algorithm Solo allows you to do is take music digitally from your iDevice, your iPad, iPhone, iPod, and then bypass that iDevice's internal DAC and instead use a superior, more sophisticated DAC inside of the Cypher Labs Algorithm Solo. The Fostex HPP1 does largely the same thing, but the key difference is, is the Fostex HPP1 has its own built-in headphone amp in addition. So, with the Cypher Labs Algorithm Solo in a portable headphone rig, you need to attach an external headphone amp to it, because again, it, the Cypher Labs Algorithm Solo does not have its own headphone amp built in. But with the Fostex HPP1 with the built-in headphone amp, you can get this set up with one less box. The digital to analog converter section, or the DAC section of the Fostex HPP1, is built around the AKM 4480 32-bit DAC chip. It's a DAC chip I wasn't previously familiar with, but it does sound very good in this implementation. The headphone amp is also quite capable. We're going to talk about the HPP1's overall performance very shortly, of course. But the headphone amp does have very good flexibility with three different gain settings, low, medium, and high, which makes it easy to match up with a bunch of different types of headphones. The headphone amp is rated uh, at 80 milliwatts per channel output uh, and is recommended for use with headphones that have impedance of 16 ohms or higher. Now, while the Fostex HPP1 can't be described as ultra compact by most people anyway, I think most HeadFi types in their, in their portable rigs that, that they carry will consider this relatively compact considering all that it does. Uh, the dimensions of the Fostex HPP1 are just over 5 inches deep, 2.95 inches wide and just a hair under an inch high. Weight is 260 grams or 9.7 ounces, so again, it's pretty compact given all that it does. As far as what it comes with, it comes with a uh, little dock cable. This short little dock cable is nice for a portable setup. This is what lets you take the digital out of your iDevice and feed it into the um, Fostex HPP1. And then, of course, it comes with a carrying case that I haven't quite figured out yet. Lots of straps and Velcro on this and haven't quite figured it out, but I'm sure you're a smarter person than me and you'll figure that out. Uh, it also comes because you can charge it via USB. You do charge it from USB, which is really nice, actually. Um, it comes with a USB charge cable. Now, as far as battery life goes, the estimate is seven hours from a full charge. I found that to be relatively accurate. Charge time is estimated at five hours. Again, I've found that to be quite accurate. Actually, most of my charge times are well under five hours um, because I don't often run it completely uh, uh, till it's dead. I'll usually charge it before it's dead. Now, as far as price goes, it's not widely available in the U.S. yet that I've seen. Um, uh, Moon Audio carries it right now. I know there are a couple of other dealers I've seen. And the price range seems to be from $650 to $800. Now, until we have more dealers carrying it locally, it'll be interesting to see what that price range is. I think it's going to stay within that range. But again, $650 to $800 is what you can expect to pay for a Fostex HPP1 right now. Now, as always, one of the most important things, if not the single most important thing, of course, is how it performs relative to its competitors, how it performs relative to its intended purpose, its design goals. And in that, I think the Fostex HPP1 is a big hit. Now, on HeadFi's forums, most people asking about the HPP1 are also curious about how it performs relative to the Cypher Labs algorithm solo. And that's a natural thing to wonder, given that they both essentially serve the same purpose. Now, in order to compare them, I want to start first by talking about just the DAC section of the Fostex HPP1, because again, unlike the Cypher Labs algorithm solo, it has its own built-in headphone amp. But I want to go DAC to DAC, and to do that, you can take the line out of the Fostex HPP1 and plug it into the same external amps that I'm using with the Cypher Labs algorithm solo, which I've done. Now, DAC to DAC, they're more similar than they are different uh, to my ears. And you can get a more distinct comparison if you compare it to, say, something like a Hi Fi Man HM801. These tend more toward the neutral. The Hi Fi Man HM801 has a lusher, more romantic sort of tonality. So there's a more distinct comparison to do there. But again, getting back to these two, they're more similar than different. Both have, again, a neutral tonal balance. They're quite neutral. 
Um, very resolving, very transparent, really good articulation and instrument separation, good extension uh, both ways, both sounding more like uh, desktop audio components than, than um, uh, something that you'd power with the battery and, and carry around with you. So DAC to DAC, I actually find them more similar than different, and DAC to DAC then I'd almost say it's a wash. So if the DAC sections of the HPP one and the Algorithm Solo are relatively equivalent, how do I recommend one over the other? Well, what it's going to come down to is the obvious form factor. Uh, and the key being that the Fostex HPP one has a built-in headphone amp, whereas the Cypher Labs Algorithm Solo does not. So if you're going to be using headphones with the HPP one that are within its built-in amp's comfort range, within its driving ability, then you can carry a reference portable rig with you that, well, looks like this versus something that looks like this. Something more compact, one less box, one less cable, and from the standpoint of airport security, for example, something that looks a little less intimidating. But that's the key, though, is if you're using uh, headphones within its comfort range. So to further the comparison between the HPP one and the Algorithm Solo, I want to focus on a couple of use cases that, that probably favor the Algorithm Solo. So one, for example, might be if you're using in-ear monitors exclusively, really sensitive in-ear monitors. If that's the case, there could be some advantage to using the Algorithm Solo. So using really sensitive in-ear monitors brings me to really one of only two critiques, criticisms I have of the Fostex HPP-1. Actually, we'll discuss both of them now since they're sort of related. When I use my most sensitive in-ear monitors, like these customs, uh, uh, JH-16 Pro or a Westone ES-5, when I use these sensitive custom in-ear monitors, um, at the very bottom of the volume range on the HPP-1, it uses a standard potentiometer for volume control from what I can tell. At the very bottom of the range, just above dead silence, there is a touch of channel imbalance. Now the thing is though, it hasn't been a problem for me because you only have to turn it a hair further to get past that channel imbalance and when you get past it, um, you're at a listening level, I'm at a listening level, lower than the lowest level I generally listen at. So it's not an issue for me. That said, some users who are sticklers for detail, who want perfect channel balance, perfect channel matching throughout the entire volume range, that might be an issue for them regardless. And I can understand that if it is, um, because at HeadFi we can be detail oriented when it comes to these things. So if that's the type of listener you are, you're mostly listening to in-ear monitors on the go, you are a stickler, you want perfect channel matching throughout the entire volume range, then headphone amps like these might be the better choices. Headphone amps that have stepped volume controls um, that are matched essentially perfectly throughout the range. This is the um, uh, Ray Samuels Audio Shadow that has stepped volume. Um, this is the TTVJ Slim also with a stepped volume control. And then this, the Headamp Pico Slim, which has some of the most uh, fine steps in a stepped volume control I've ever used. These things have essentially perfect volume matching throughout their entire volume ranges. And if you're a stickler for that kind of matching, those might be a better choice. And those you can use in conjunction uh, uh, with the Cypher Labs Algorithm Solo. I am not a stickler for that kind of detail as long as the listening level is lower than I would listen at where, where the channel matching does come in, then for me, again, it's just not an issue and it hasn't been an issue. While I'm on the issue of volume controls, that brings my only other criticism of the HPP one out. That's the volume knob. I mean, it's a pretty elegant unit uh, it, and it's pretty clean in its design, but the volume knob sticks out quite a bit further than I'd like. I would, I would like a smaller volume knob. I haven't had any mechanical problems with it or any issues with it. I just wish it was a bit smaller. Another use case that's worth discussing when you're comparing the HPP-1 and the Algorithm Solo is the use of headphones that are particularly challenging or really hard to drive. Starting with the Odyssey LCD-2, which is very popular on HeadFi right now, it's a planar magnetic headphone. Not a terribly difficult headphone to drive, but one that responds well to amps that put out gobs of quality power. The HPP-1 isn't an amp I'd describe as having gobs of power, so it can drive it, it's just not an ideal matchup. Even less ideal is, uh, I have an AKG K340, it's a vintage headphone, um, also notoriously difficult to drive, also not a good matchup um, uh, for the HPP-1. The Sennheiser HD800 is another example. Um, you can hear sounds out of it, you can hear music out of it, but it's not an ideal matchup. And even less so, the Hi-Fi Man HE6, planar magnetic headphone, a reputation on Head 5 for being very difficult to drive because it is very difficult to drive, even for a lot of desktop headphone amps. I only have one portable headphone amp that can drive this quite well, and it's not the HPP-1. It's the Ray Samuels Audio SR-71B in balanced output mode. Actually, that amp can drive all of the headphones I just mentioned very, very well. 
um, certainly for a portable headphone uh, amplifier. And so with these kinds of headphones, which I don't think most people are using portably, but for these kinds of headphones, if you are using them on the go, uh, the Cypher Labs algorithm solo does have a key advantage because you can match it up with, with a beast like the SR71B. Oh, by the way, with the analog out, you can use an SR71B with a Fostex HPP1, but if you know you're going to be using a portable headphone amp in addition to the HPP1, it makes more sense just to get the algorithm solo because it's more compact in size. By now, it might seem to you like I'm actually recommending the Cypher Labs algorithm solo over the Fostex HPP1 in general, but that's actually not the case at all. For the specific use cases we discussed, and if you're willing to choose a headphone amp to match up with the Cypher Labs algorithm solo, optimized for those specific types of headphones we just discussed, then yeah, it's going to have some advantages for those things. Um, but in general, I've found that I'm carrying this more often than this, and let me explain. When I'm on the go, again, I'm not really using in-ear monitors most of the time, and I certainly am not using hard to drive, full-size over-ear headphones most of the time when I'm on the go either. The headphones I tend to use when I'm on the go are headphones like this, the Sennheiser HD 558, um, its companion, the Sennheiser HD 598. Um, also, the Great OHF1 is another uh, headphone I like to use on the go. Um, this new one around my neck, by the way, it's the uh, V-Moda M80. It's a nice portable over-ear headphone that I've really been enjoying since it's arrived. We'll be talking about that on the forums or on a video at some point in the future. The Sennheiser HD 2512, we discussed this in episode 4. And my overall favorite portable headphone right now, the Biodynamic DT1350. Um, is, this has been kind of my go-to headphone since it's arrived. Um, these are the headphones I tend to use on the go more than any others. Now, you say, well, what do these headphones have in common? Some of them are open, some of them are closed. But what they all have in common is that none of them are terribly challenging to drive. Um, but yet, all of them respond quite well to high quality amplification. And all are within the capabilities and the driving ability of the Fostex HPP1's built-in headphone amp. Um, with all of these headphones, it sounds outstanding. And again, the rig that I've been carrying most often is this one right here, uh, the iPod, the HPP1, and the DT1350. And that's just been my portable go-to reference rig. So yeah, when I'm leaving and I'm on the go, I'm grabbing this a lot more often than this because of the headphones I'm using with it. So consider the headphones you're going to use with the system if you're trying to decide between an HPP1 and an algorithm solo. Um, for me, this is my go-to most of the time. Um, but consider your use and, and see what you think and pick what seems most appropriate to you. I hope this has been helpful to you. So anyways, that's the Fostex HPP1. We'll see you next time on HeadFi TV.